Okay, so now the dance move you hit hit us in Paris. I think it was Paris. Have you improved on your intro? You First of all, yeah, no, 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 no. The reason why it looked so bad was because they were doing the intro so fast, and so I couldn't really like you know get into my you know my uh. So see, that's how it, that's how it's supposed to be. But now they're like this because it was going so fast. So. The allegations that say I can't dance, it's dead. I can dance. You know, every everybody has different intros. Like, you either go really slow or really fast. So I learned from from that that, you know, you just got to take that out of there. So I, I didn't touch it no more. <laughs> so this year, are you doing something different? Is there another dance? Uh, absolutely. We're, it's going to be a fun year. There's been a lot of, you know, TikTok dance moves. There's going to be, you know, hopefully I can do more sellies. Exactly. <laughs> I can do more sellies. <laughs> But I'm excited to use the sellies that I have this year. It's going to be fun. And then coming <laughs> off an undefeated championship season, how do you top that? Like, are you still hungry? Like, teams are coming. Oh, yeah, we are definitely hungry. You know, everyone's on our back. I know everyone's going to come for us this year, and I know that we're going to meet the moment. You know, we still have, have the whole team coming back besides Camilla. But, um, you know, she was kind of a missing piece for us. So, you know, had a, a field day in the transfer portal. But we're very still hungry. I know a lot of teams are going to come for us, but... That's what's going to make us push ourselves even more and compete even more, which has been so, so fun. This team loves to compete. Um, we talk trash to each, each other. We can't get stomped on. Right. We can't, you know, we got to take care of business. You know, last year we didn't know what was what we were going to get into, but now we do this year. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what's going to push us even more this year. So just, just confirmation. So a two-peat is in the plans. Oh, absolutely. What were some goals that you had when you were a freshman and then every year after that? Like, what are what did you find in your game that you needed to either add or something like that? I didn't have any, like, personal goals mm -hmm. just going in. I just wanted to win a national championship <laughs> right off the bat. Um, <laughs> obviously, that didn't happen, but COVID happened, so it was kind of hard. You know, we really didn't spend time as we – as a team because of COVID. And so, you know, that year it was just stay healthy. You know, every year I've been in college, I've had some nagging injuries. You know, every year I haven't been my best. I haven't been healthy. So this is a really big year for me. So I, my personal goal for this year is just to push myself to my limit and just be healthy. I mean, I've been battling injuries every year in college. So hopefully this will be my first free healthy year to where I don't have to worry about my knees or like my ankles or like anything else. So yeah, I don't have any like, oh, I want to be player of the year. Or I want to be SEC. Like, no, like that's like none of my, I mean, yeah, obviously it's goals, but it's like not like my number one, like, oh, I need to go get this. Right. True. My, my goal is to get drafted, just be the best player I can be this year and be in the best shape possible. And then with <laughs> all the movement and transfer going, going on with, um, what teams made you pay attention a little bit? Like who look, looks competitive to you? Man, UConn. Yeah. Um, they got some pretty good pieces and, you know, I think they're due for a healthy year and I low key might think this might be their year where, where all their <laughs> players are healthy. Um, but you know, UConn's always a competitive team, you know, they're always gonna, you know, give their best and they're coached by the best. So I think they're going to have um, a really good year. Um, I think the SEC, SCC teams joining in Texas and Oklahoma, I think that's going to be very competitive as well. Mm -hmm. Um, especially with Oklahoma, like returning some of their, you know, players and getting um, rigging beers out of the portal. So exactly. um, I think those two teams are going to be legit. I also think both um, L.A. teams, USC and UCLA, are going to be very competitive. Um, obviously, there's going to be more, but that's, that's who I have my eye on right now. Is, um, and then can you give some advice to players on the come up? Like what separated you from the competition when you were in high school? Some advice that I give to players is like just have fun. I think like when I was in high school, it was so much fun to play, even though I was hurt like half the time in high school. Mm -hmm. But it was just so much fun just being with everyone and just enjoying the ride, enjoying the journey. I think a lot of people are just not enjoying their journey nowadays. I think they're just looking towards, you know, NIL or, or that bag. But yeah. I just I just think people just really need to get that joy back in the journey and just enjoy the journey and not just rush it. Um, what separated me was my work ethic, was getting in the gym before practice, after practice, and working on those days where I didn't want to work. You know, when you want to stand out, you got to, you know, do the little things. You got to do the, you got to pay attention to the little details. You got to work on your game consistently and get reps in. And that's just all what basketball is, is reps and creativity and just the fundamentals. <laughs> right. Touch on like how important shooting is too, because a lot of times you'll see players during AAU season, they don't have a mid-range or outside shot. So talk about what did you work on specifically, like 
like how many shots were you getting up or like was that like a focus to have a one two pull up you know mid range and things like that you know last year i didn't really touch up on mid range game just because you know they didn't need me to do that mm-hmm. um <laughs> they just needed me to shoot the ball <laughs> wherever i got it so mm-hmm. you know shout out to all the haters i said i need a mid range game i do have it they just didn't need it last year right. but you'll see a full game package this year but <laughs> You know, I think a lot of people sleep on the mid-range game. I mean, I was living by the three last year, living and dying by the three, I might say. <laughs> but I don't I don't believe in that. You know, you guys just got to work on your finishes from the paint, and then you got to start in the mid-range, and then you got to start back to the three. So when I get in the gym, I always like to do my finishes first, my, mid- my mid-range, and then threes. Because I see, like, kids, like, coming in and just shooting threes automatically, mm. straight from coming out of the car. You know, I think... Everything, every aspect of the game is important, but I think, you know, working on your form shots is the most important and just um, expanding your game from there. And then advice for your mental health as well, because you face adversity too with your injuries in high school and college. So how do you get away? Like, do you take breaks away from basketball? Like, what do you do to, you know, reset? It's it's mandatory to take breaks from, from basketball on my um, agenda. But for my mental, I just love to relax. I just love to be on TikTok. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um that's so bad i shouldn't be on screens all day and when i'm home i like to hang out with my niece and just chill but when i'm here in columbia i just like to watch tv and just melt and melt in bed and just stay off screens i'm trying my best to do that but mental health is so important Um, i lean on god a lot during those times where i just need a a mental break especially throughout the season because it's so long Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, lean on him. I pray to him. I read the word. I'm like, hey, can you, you know, give me some guidance, give me some advice to help me get through this day. I'm really tired of basketball. Mm-hmm. Right, no, for sure. <laughs> today was just um, a rough day. I just need you to give me some love today and right. some support. And, you know, he always comes through. So I talked to my, my boyfriend. He does a lot for me as well. And it's just he knows what the grind is. So, you know, after basketball practice, I'm like, hey, like, you know, I'm like, hey, I'm tired. Like, I don't want to talk about basketball today. Like, he does a really good job, you know, taking my mental away from basketball and just helping me just, you know, like, hey, like, how's your day? Like, you know, I saw this on Twitter. Like, let's talk about it. OK, well, shout out to the boyfriend. <laughs> right. Ah. <laughs> uh, touch on a little bit of your Samoan culture, because I know I read an article saying that there was no one really that looked like you. Uh, so talk about how you just created your own path. And like, you know, like you said, I think when you went back to either Lil Yola Country Day, the area, like more Samoans were getting into basketball. And I see a lot of Asians, too. You know, coming to South Carolina, they really made me hone in on onto my culture mm-hmm. um, and representation because you don't see very many Polynesians in the South. Mm-hmm. So, um, <laughs> right. side note, they all thought I was black. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I really had to hone in on my representation and know that, hey, not a lot of people know about Samoans. So I was able to bring that culture here to South Carolina. Um, my dad was fortunately able to come down to South Carolina during the first two rounds of this um, of the tournament. And so my family was able to give them a barbecue. And so he was able to meet all the family all the parents and they was able to, you know, make some Kahlua, which is pig, Ooh. some chicken teriyaki, some mac salad, some rice. And so I was able to share that piece of my culture with the team and the coaches and they all loved it. And so they were really able to, you know, hone in on that and just be able to have open minds, you know, learn about my culture, about the Samoan culture, about Polynesians and know that, you know, we're out here. You know, this is going to be a really big year for, you know, Poly Hoops. Um, you have Katie Fiso at Oregon. Mm. Um, Charlize Ledger Walker at UCLA, um, me at South Carolina, uh, Saini, Saini at Ohio State. And so I know there's um, plenty more, but mm-hmm. I know that we're on the come up. Um, Melissa Peely, obviously, she's in the in the league, so she's done a lot for our culture as well. Right. And then, um, okay, so let's talk about NIL a little bit. Is NIL real? Is the money real? Like, do you ever look at your bank account and smile? I'm really grateful that we have NIL. I'm just not really grateful that we have to pay taxes for it. So um, <laughs> that's probably the worst thing about NIL is the taxes. Okay. I'm sure a lot of people get more taxed than me. but And then any particular brands you want to work with as well? Any brands? I would love to work with Powerade. Ooh. I mean, Pow, 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 Powerade. I think it would be a really good, you know, shout out to Cam Reacts. He's the one that did that. I think that would be a really good collab. I mean, yeah. I did a little something with them, but I think it would be, you know, I think we can do, get it on a more serious note. 
I love it. Yeah, I would love to push that agenda. As far as your NIL money and stuff, do you invest it or do you send some to family or? I am looking forward to investing. I think I can grow my money even more. I think lately I've been thinking about how I can grow my money more. I want to, you know, you know, this is a lot of, a lot of bread. So, you know, you got to <laughs> make it last. Make exactly. It you got to last. Like, I don't want to be broke after college. Right. Like, that's either investing, saving, or just, just relaxing on the on the expensive buys that I'd be, you know. And then, um, have you been watching like the WNBA? Like, what rookies are you impressed with, and and on how they transition? Like, what takeaways do you pull or learning from? I mean, this rookie class is actually really good. Um, you know, you have Cam Brink, who unfortunately went out with ACL tear. Right. J C Sheldon at the Dallas Wings. She's been balling as well. She's been giving some minutes and doing really well in in that organization. Um, Camilla, obviously, and my girl Camilla. She's still adjusting. I think um, she's also coming back from injury, her shoulder injury. So I know she's gonna look her best in a, in these upcoming weeks. Obviously, you have Clayton Clark, who's been balling, been hooping. You can't say nothing else. She's been hooping, and then you have Angel Reese, who's also been you know tearing it up, just showing how like where hard work can get you. Right. You know, this draft class is really, it's been really fun to watch them. And it just goes to show that if you put the work in, if you work hard, you can play anywhere. And it's just been fun. It looks competitive. And I'm just, you know, just keying in on what I can do as a player to, you know, play in that league. And then how about your favorite food? Like, what spots to eat when you're in San Diego and then in, in South Carolina? Anything remind you of uh, home in South Carolina? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. So what I say is like South Carolina. I mean, the South is like known for their fried food. I right. mean, obviously their fried food, everything's fried. So I try to stay away from that. But when I go home, I love to eat sushi, um, sushi and Mexican food. When I go back home, <laughs> I don't eat Mexican food outside of California. I can't do it. When I go home, I also eat Wiener Schnitzel. That's so weird. Um, Wiener Schnitzel is like a good. Is a hot dogs. dog joint. <laughs> I love the chili dogs. Yes. Oh my gosh. I love um the corn dogs. I love the chili cheese dogs. I love the hot dogs. Like and then when I come here to South Carolina, I love a good seafood boil. Mm. You're coming out this year into the WNBA draft. So how do you feel? Because you played one and two positions in college. So where do you see yourself as a pro? Shoot, wherever they need me. All right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take um whatever they need me to do. I'll run the point. I'll run the two. I'll do anything. Knowing the back of my mind that I have the draft coming up is obviously going to push me even more. But I'm just worried about my team this year and what we can do. What's your accomplishments? What what are Which ones are you most proud of? Or is it just that national championship? Oh, the national championship tops everything and being undefeated and winning the national championship. So that's probably like the number one accomplishment.